crowds, right? You are so focused on the idea. There is no space. There is no room for any other idea in your consciousness. You're focused solely on this one idea and it's so loud to you, you can't even hear anything else. All right, welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt, and this is a daily show all about making Neville Goddard's work easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply. And today we are proceeding with chapter six of The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. And the title of this episode is Attention. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's James 1, 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Neville writes, attention is forceful in proportion to the narrowness of its focus. That is, when it is obsessed with a single idea or sensation. It is steadied and powerfully focused only by such an adjustment of the mind as permits you to see one thing only. For you study the intention and increase its power by confining it. Now, the analogy here is that of a garden hose, right? So you have a garden hose, you turn on the water and the water is just coming out of the garden hose, right? And it's not, you know, um, you don't have the nozzle on, right? It's just kind of coming out, it's just kind of going everywhere. Right, but if you put a nozzle on the on the garden hose and you change it to the setting that concentrates the water, right? The water becomes more forceful and it becomes concentrated into a point. And this is where you can get the power washer effect, right? You take a garden hose, you get a nozzle on it, you get it really concentrated, you get that really narrow beam of water, and you can clean things just with the force of the water alone. And this is a great analogy to apply to this idea of attention. Because Neville is saying here that attention is forceful in proportion to the narrowness of its focus, right? So when the water is just spread wide and going everywhere, it's not particularly forceful. But when it's concentrated and in, in, in it's in a narrowness of focus, that is when it is forceful, right? Now, our attention in general can be compared to that of a watering hose, right? So we're life-giving spirit. Our lives are the gardens, right? We're gardeners. Our lives are our gardens. And as we walk through the garden of our life, our attention is moving from this thing to that thing. It's moving back and forth, right? And our attention is basically like the watering hose. And what we're focused upon, we are watering with the energy of our attention, right? We are growing it with the energy of our attention. And this is why Neville teaches us if there's something in our life that we don't want to continue to grow, we must remove our attention from it completely and focus on what we do want, right? So there's a powerful analogy here, the garden analogy, the watering hose analogy. And we continue with Neville's words here. He says, attention is steadied and powerfully focused only by such an adjustment of the mind as permits you to see one thing only. For you steady the attention and increase its power by confining it. The desire which realizes itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated. Exclusively concentrated. If you wish your desire to realize itself, you must focus exclusively upon your desire. Neville says, an idea is endowed with power only in proportion to the degree of attention fixed on it. Now, this is some very deep wisdom here. If you think about an idea, right? An idea is powerful and an idea alone can change the world, but only if people pay attention to it, right? If no one's paying any attention to the idea, that idea is not gonna do anything. It has no power, right? But when people pay attention to an idea, that idea can change the world, right? And the same thing goes to your attention, to your, your desire that you are intending to create, right? That idea, the idea of your wish fulfilled is powerful in proportion to how much of your attention is focused upon it. Concentrated observation, Neville writes, is the attentive attitude directed toward some specific end. Observation, concentrated. 
right? So you're concentrating your observation on a specific end. So you are observing the end that you desire to observe in your imagination first at the exclusion of everything else. The attentive attitude involves selection. For when you pay attention, it signifies that you have decided to focus your attention on one object or state rather than on another. So here we're talking the idea of an opportunity cost, right? So when you're focused on one thing, it's at the exclusion of everything else that you could be thinking about or focusing upon, right? When you're doing a job, right? When you, when you take a job and you're working for someone else and you're going out every day and you're investing time into a job, right? It's at the exclusion of everything else that you could be doing with your life. This is the idea of opportunity cost, right? So when you're paying attention, paying, right? Attention, the most valuable currency we have, right? Attention. When we're paying attention and we're doing it exclusively, right? There's this, this is a process of selection. We're selecting to place our attention on what we do want at the exclusion of everything else we can be thinking about, including all of the invitations to think about what we don't want. We have decided to focus our attention upon one object or state rather than any other. Therefore, when you know what you want, you must deliberately focus your attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. Crowds, right? You are so focused on the idea there is no space. There is no room for any other idea in your consciousness. You're focused solely on this one idea and it's so loud to you, you can't even hear anything else. This is the secret of attention. The power of attention is the measure of your inner force. You wanna know how powerful you are? What is the power of your attention? Can you sustain your attention? Your ability to sustain your attention is equal to your personal power. Your ability to sustain your attention is equal to your personal power. Concentrated observation of one thing shuts out other things and causes them to disappear. The great secret of success is to focus the attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled without permitting any distraction. This is the secret, the great secret of success, to focus your attention, the most valuable currency you have. You're gonna pay it, invest it into the feeling of the wish fulfilled in a way that allows no distraction, right? So you cut off any other source of information, you cut off any other ideas from your consciousness and you are solely invested in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And this is the great secret of success. All progress depends upon an increase of attention. So if you wish to make progress, you must increase your attention. The ideas which impel you to action are those which dominate the consciousness, those which possess the attention, right? So you act out based on the ideas you are holding in your mind, right? You don't act out based on ideas that you're not thinking about, right? You act on the ideas that you're actively thinking about. So the ideas that impel you to action are those which dominate your consciousness, which possess your attention. So which ideas are possessing your attention in this moment? And then he has a Bible quote here. He says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, I press toward the mark. This means, Neville writes, you, this one thing you can do, forgetting those things that are behind. This is a powerful invitation to forget those things which are behind, to let the past remain in the past, to let the dead bury the dead, to free and liberate yourself from all that came before and to focus solely and completely upon pressing towards the mark. You can press toward the mark of filling your mind with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To the unenlightened man, 
this will seem to be all fantasy. Yet all progress comes from those who do not take the accepted view, nor accept the world as it is. No one ever changed the world by conforming to the world as it is, right? The most imaginative men and women and humans of history are those who dared to dream in a way that the rest of the world was not presently dreaming, right? So to the unenlightened man, these ideas may seem to be fantasy, but we know better. We know better. And we also know that it is us. It is we, the dreamers, the active imaginers, right? That change everything. We are the game changers. As was stated heretofore, if you can imagine what you please, and if the forms of your thought are as vivid as the forms of nature, you are, by virtue of the power of your imagination, master of your fate. This is the mark of success, to imagine so vividly that your forms of thought are just as real as the forms of nature. My inner world is just as real as my outer world, right? The inner world of cause is just as real as the outer world of effect. This is a practice, right? Because we've been trained to view the outer world of effect as more real than the inner world of cause, right? And this was disempowering to believe that, right? But now we've taken the power back. And now we know this is the world of cause and that is the world of effect, right? So the cause starts here. This is the effect. We must exercise our imagination until our forms of cause, our forms of imagination are just as vivid as the world of effect. And that is when we are master of our fate. Your imagination is you yourself. And the world, as your imagination sees it, is the real world. The real world is not out there. The real world is in here. And that world out there merely reflects this real world. When you set out to master the movements of your attention, which must be done if you would successfully alter the course of observed events, it is then that you realize how little control you exercise over your imagination and how much it is dominated by sensory impressions and by a drifting on the tides of idle moods. That's what I love about Neville. He truly is the Shakespeare of mystics. This is such a beautiful sentence. When you set out to master the movements of attention, you realize how little control you exercise over your imagination and how much it is dominated by sensory impressions and by a drifting on the tides of idle moods, right? So it is only when you become aware of your creative power and start to seek to control it that you start to realize how little control you actually have over it, right? You notice that one moment you're focused, the next moment your attention is pulled to this shiny object over here, or this shiny object over there, or your mood changes, right? You're just drifting on the idle, on the tides of idle moods. So he gives you an exercise. This is a mastery exercise on how to master the control of your attention. He writes, to aid in mastering the control of your attention, practice this exercise night after night. So do this every night. Just before you drift off to sleep, strive to hold your attention on the activities of the day in reverse order, right? So it's the end of the day. You're laying in bed, and now you relive the day in reverse. Focus your attention first on the last thing you did, that is, getting into bed, and then move it backward in time over the events until you reach the first event of the day, which was getting out of bed. This is no easy exercise, but just as specific exercises greatly help in developing specific muscles, this will greatly help in developing the muscle of your attention, right? So if you want bigger biceps, you do bicep curls, right? You want to learn to sustain your personal power, which is the power of your attention, right? Then you exercise the attention by practicing. 
And this is a great way to practice. Practice holding your attention on living your day in reverse order before falling asleep at night. Your attention must be developed, controlled, and concentrated. Developed, controlled, concentrated. In order to change your concept of yourself successfully and thereby change your future. Imagination is able to do anything, but only according to the internal direction of your attention. Does not operate itself, right? This law does not operate itself. We are the operant power, and we do it by directing our attention. If you persist night after night, sooner or later, you will awaken in yourself a center of power and become conscious of your greater self, the real you. Attention is developed by repeated exercise or habit. Through habit, an action becomes easier, right? You're practicing. You're practicing, this is a skill. Now, a lot of people, they will try this and immediately get frustrated because they suddenly realize that this imagination and attention that they have has grown unwieldy right? Because for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, your imagination perhaps has been allowed to just run unfettered, right? Run from this subject to that subject, this topic to that topic, this idea to that idea, right? Without mastering it and kind of reining it in, right? Is being the master of your imagination, the master of your attention, the master of your fate, right? So for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, right? Your imagination has been running wild. And then you sit down one night and you try to rein it in and you get immediately frustrated because you realize, wow, this is a bigger task than what I signed up for, right? But here's the thing. This is the life skill. This is the life skill to learn. This is, this is it. This is the one, right? So this is superpower training, right? Superhero superpower training, right? And a superhero does not learn their superpowers overnight. They practice with it for a lifetime, right? So this is a lifetime practice. This is a lifetime refining of the master, the mastery of your attention. Through habit and action becomes easier, Neville says. And so, in the course of time, gives rise to a facility or faculty, which can then be put to higher uses. What can you do when your imagination, when your attention is refined and focused and controlled and sustained. When you are personally powerful in that way, what can you do? The answer is anything, absolutely anything. This is the key that unlocks all the horizons of what is possible. When you attain control of the inner direction of your attention, you will no longer stand in shallow water, but will launch out into the deep of life. You will walk in the assumption of the wish fulfilled as on a foundation more solid even than earth. This is the task. This is what we signed up to learn how to do, right? To learn to master the movements of our attention. Now this exercise of reliving the day in reverse order, I've tried this. This is not an easy exercise, at least not for me. I found it to be challenging to hold my attention in that way. I continue to practice with this exercise because it's a great one. It's, a, it's perhaps amongst the greatest. And what's interesting is that Neville is not the only one to talk about the power of attention, right? This is actually something taught by mystics, masters, and teachers across generations, right? And when you have developed and refined your attention, that, that in and of itself is a superpower. Now, here's the thing. We are living in a world where having sustained attention is quite rare. There's a lot of people that have very short attention spans. And that really is a leakage of energy, right? Being unable to focus on one thing is a leaking of energy. Now, this is not a judgmental thing, right? It's not right or wrong, good or bad, but it is an opportunity. And we have a decision that we can make to work on, to cultivate, right? Work makes it sound hard. It's not hard, right? It's simply a matter of learning to discipline your imagination, meaning just like meditation, every time your mind runs, you come back to the mat, 
Same thing. Every time your attention runs, you come back, right? You bring it back to the focus of the, on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And then you do exercises. You do imagination exercises. You do attention focusing exercises. And you cultivate this ability. I have a prompt for you in the comments below. Let me know. Where are you on this journey? Have you mastered the movements of your attention? What do you do to practice controlling your attention? Do you have any focus exercises that you practice on the regular, right? Have you learned anything about this that you would like to share with us? Leave me a comment below. Tap that thumbs up button to help other people find this important information and subscribe to this channel so that you get Daily Neville tomorrow. Imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you in the next. Thank <laughs> you.